The first thing that we need to understand is what is absolute value. And absolute value means a distance from zero. So in our example, we look at that greater than five and it tells us that two X plus one is more than five away from zero. Now, if I go to my number line, that tells me that I can't be exactly five away, but I can be more than five away. So more than five away would start on the other side of five. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an open circle because I'm not including five. Anything bigger will work. And it could also be more than five away on the negative side. So that would put me on the other side of negative five. That's five away and anything further away than that. So this means that two X plus one can live either on that side or on that side. And that's gonna give me two inequalities. So these two cases are pretty consistent every time, which makes it nice. So on the first side, I'm gonna take the two X plus one. Notice I no longer have the absolute value bars. On this case, I am less than negative five. So I'm switching my original symbol to a less than and making the number negative. So I am further than negative five. So less than negative five. I connect these with an or because I can't be in two places at the same time. And notice for that other one, I am more than five. So this tells me or two X plus one is greater than five. This gives me two really nice inequalities to solve. Let's go ahead and go through the math. Solving that first inequality, I wanna isolate my two X. So I subtract a one from both sides and I end up with two X is less than negative six. Finally, I divide both sides by a two, oops, by a two, and I get X is less than negative three. Now this is just one part of my solution set. So let me solve the other inequality. It's gonna be exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna subtract a one from both sides, but this time I get two X is greater than four, divide both sides by that two, and I get X is more than two, and I've got that or there in the middle. Now I can express this using set builder notation. So I would just put set brackets, X, and then a bar for such that. So that little bar means such that. So this would be set builder notation. I could also express this guy on a number line. So it just really depends on what your teacher is asking for. Let's go ahead and say that zero is here in the middle and I'm gonna be less than negative three. So negative three might be about there. Greater than two, so one, two might be about there. If I describe these less than negative three, not at negative three, but I'm gonna put an open circle and then everything less than greater than two, again, an open circle and everything greater than. This gives me my interval notation. So I end up with less than negative three could go on forever to negative infinity. So open parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, my high value for that part is negative three, but it's not included. So I want a parenthesis there. This or becomes my union symbol. So I'm gonna go ahead and join these two parts together in my solution set. My low value for the second part is gonna be a two. And this one goes on forever to infinity. And this is my solution as an interval. In this next one, we have a less than or equal to symbol, but I'm still going to interpret that less than or equal to eight as a distance. So in this case, three X plus one is either eight away or less than eight away from zero. So on my number line here, if I put zero in the middle, I could be as much as eight away on the positive side or negative eight on the negative side. And this is gonna be everything in between. So that three X plus one can be anywhere from negative eight to positive eight. And I'm gonna use closed circles because I'm including all of those, including the eight and negative eight in my possible places for three X plus one to live. Now this one's really nice because it gives me a continued inequality and I can solve it all at once. So negative eight is less than or equal to everything, which is my three X plus one that comes next. So I'm just kind of skipping to each piece here. And then finally that last piece, and that's gonna be less than or equal to a positive eight. 
As I'm solving this, I just want to isolate the x term first. So let's subtract a 1 from all three sides. And I get negative 9 is less than or equal to 3x is less than or equal to 8 minus 1 is 7. And now I've got to divide everybody by a 3. So as I divide everybody by a 3, I end up with negative 9 over 3 is negative 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 7 thirds. Now let's go ahead and put this one in a number line. If I draw this on my number line, I want everything between negative 3 and 7 thirds. And as I'm doing that, I want to include both of those values. So negative 3 gets a closed circle all the way up to 7 thirds, which also gets a closed circle this is an easy one to put in terms of an interval as well. My low value is negative 3. My high value is 7 thirds. Both of those are included. So I'm going to open with square brackets and close with square brackets. We've got just one left to go. In this next one, I'm not quite ready to jump into the distance because I've got that plus 2 in the way. So I want to start by isolating my 5 minus x in absolute value. So I'm going to take that 5 minus x in absolute value plus the 2, less than or equal to 9, and let's subtract that 2 so we get the absolute value by itself. So minus 2 minus 2, and I get 5 minus x is less than or equal to 7. Now let's interpret this as a distance using our number line. Okay, so here's our number line. So I could be at seven away from zero, I'll put zero there, or negative seven, negative seven, or seven, or anywhere in between. I'm gonna use a closed circle all the way over, and that's where my five minus x can live, five minus x. So the inequality that I end up with has a negative 7 first. That's less than or equal to everybody else, which is the 5 minus x, less than or equal to 7. Let's go ahead and do the math to solve. I want to get that negative x, really that x by itself. I'm going to start by subtracting a 5 from all three sides. I get negative 12, less than or equal to negative x, less than or equal to 7 minus 5 is 2. Now I almost have x by itself, but I need to divide by that negative. As I'm dividing by that negative or negative 1, hopefully a little red flag went up in your head. This is where the negative means opposite. So I need to reverse those inequality symbols as well. So I'm going to divide all three sides by the negative 1. And I'm also going to take the opposite or reverse those inequality symbols. Okay, so what do I get? Negative 12 divided by negative 1 is 12. My symbol becomes a greater than or equal to. I get an x in the middle. The next symbol becomes a greater than or equal to. And 2 over negative 1 is a negative 2. And I'm going to take this inequality and I'm going to completely flip it around so that it's in order and it makes a little more sense as we're reading it. So as I take this entire thing and flip it around, I get negative 2. Negative 2 is less than or equal to, as I'm reading it from that direction, x. x is, reading it from the x, less than or equal to 12. Now I can put this into set builder. I can graph it on the number line. I'm going to go ahead and do an interval. I'm including the lower bound and the upper bound, which is the negative 2 and the 12. So I want square brackets around both of those. You guys are doing fantastic. We're going to start looking at systems of equations in my next video. You got this.